Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, and today I'd like to do an educational video on ensemble weather forecasting, what products I use and how I use them. We'll also go over the European and its newest updates here. The best global model in the world got a bit better, and it's sharing more data with us and at a higher resolution. So let's jump right in here. What is an ensemble weather forecast? So it's basically a set of forecasts that present the range of future weather possibilities. So we take 50 different ensemble members and we change the initial conditions with those uh, 50 ensemble members there and we run those out. So this can give you a great look at the uncertainty in the forecast here and it basically tries to correct for some of the errors we have in our initial conditions. Now, I will show spaghetti plots sometimes. You can kind of see in the early portion of the forecast, the lines tend to stay together. You have higher confidence. But as you get further off into the future, you can see how chaotic this system gets. Looks like a big plate of noodles, right? That's why they call them spaghetti plots. So you could see kind of the troughing here. And that signal does exist often in the extended forecast. But you can also see a lot of uncertainty going on there. So that's the power of the ensemble members there telling us just where we may, you know, where the most uncertainty does lie. So now looking at something I show a lot I show this. This is the blue line, the control run here. And the mean is the average of all 50 ensemble members. The control is the initial conditions best we understand them. So you can see when the green and the blue line are together, you have pretty good confidence in the forecast here. But once you get off into the extended, you can see they start to diverge a bit here. And you can see the ensemble members here uh, noted by these blue boxes. That's the 90th and the 10th percentile of those 50 ensemble member runs. So you can see big possibilities here and big variations in the actual temperature as you go out into the forecast. So you can see by the time you get to the 15th Saturday afternoon, you have pretty good confidence of what's coming, but then that quickly falls apart as you go on through the extended. Now, our lack of knowledge does significantly increase uncertainty in the forecast. This is why there is so much work going into approving our forecast of initial, initial conditions. Because after all, like I've said on my channel, garbage in, garbage out, right? It doesn't matter what kind of data you're putting in. If it's not accurate, you know, it's not clearly representing what's going on in the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is a chaotic system. This means that the it is sensitive on and dependent on initial conditions in a chaotic system. A slight change in the input conditions can lead to significant change in the output forecast. Think the spaghetti chart that I showed you earlier. And of course, in a non-chaotic system, those small differences aren't going to mean bigger things down line here. But the ensemble forecasting does this by looking at a spread of possible outcomes. It's a very valuable tool, especially looking off into the extended forecast for a forecaster. Now, what kind of upgrades are here? We're going to talk about ensembles here more here in a moment, but I want to go over this. Kind of goes hand hand in hand with what's going on recently we here with the European. So um, you know, big upgrades came in here with the European model. And basically the old version here, the ensemble runs were being run at 18 kilometer resolution. So we, you know, we went to nine kilometers here. We really increased the resolution. And this is the same as the high resolution deterministic run now. So the control for the deterministic and the ensemble is actually going to be the same here. And then we're going to have 50 additional ensemble runs with that nine kilometer resolution. So really big upgrades regarding that. And um, from their calculations, the model has improved about two to six percent, and the European is already quite good. So this is good. I'm I'm looking forward to this. This is awesome. You know, it's sorry to the GFS there, even though it does outperform the GFS. It's not always by a lot, but you know, we'll take what we can get, right? Now you can see it here in real time. It just updated here over the last day or so. You can see the uh, the earlier runs of the ensemble members here versus the 0 0.1 degree here. So this is the 18 kilometer version. That's the nine. Now they're all rented that nine kilometer version there. And you can see here, this is Tillamook taken back in April and you can see the 0 0.2 there. And it kind of shows you not much has changed on this. This isn't going to look any different. You're going to see the 50 ensemble members here in the control. And then you're going to see the mean and the control running along here. Now, as you update there, now this should all be higher resolution and the forecast should be a little bit better here. So notice that resolution increase. And here we go with, um, this is something I use called the, the plume, the total precipitation plume here. So this green line here is an average of all these in 50 ensemble runs. And all these 50 members are marked by these little dashed gray lines here. And this is the initial conditions, the blue. So you can see the best data that we have actually says not much precip is going to be occurring here over this forecast period. 
but the ensemble meme, the ensemble members let you know that, hey, there's some uncertainty going on here because a lot of these ensemble members actually do have a little bit of precipitation. This isn't the best example to use just because you're only looking at eight tenths of an inch as the highest, maybe nine tenths of an inch here, but it kind of shows you how an ensemble forecast works. Now, I'll show this one too. This is multiple run trend. This is not an ensemble forecast. This is a deterministic run. Then you're just looking at different times. This is the afternoon of the 22nd. Then you're in the next morning, next afternoon, and so on. So this is just a deterministic run. This does not include any ensemble members here. But also the deterministic will become the control run for the ensemble. Hopefully that's not too confusing there, but they're just going to combine them because they're both at the same resolution now. So you might as well, right? Now, there's also many different ways to look at the same data. This is the same ensemble data here. I took CTAC here, and you can see the heights there at 500 millibars here, about what, 582, 583 here in the ensemble mean versus the control, pretty similar. And then I can show that to you also on a North America map here. And if you look at Seattle, that 580, five or what is that 585 line is just to the south so about 583 you can see that data lines up and it checks out here so it's just a couple different ways of looking at the same data in these ensemble runs now something that i've become known for kind of on the channel here we like to look at some of these individual ensemble runs here and just have a glance off into fantasy land and i pulled this one today because in the southern hemisphere it is winter time down there and i don't know exactly where this is but 28 day de november airport there down in argentina here you can kind of see how the control of the mean generally less than five centimeters of snowfall but you see one of those ensemble runs showing what over 20 inches of of uh, snowfall there 20 centimeters not inches sorry but it's kind of interesting to look at some of those in individual ensemble runs it's kind of what we do when there's not much going on and i kind of stress that hey this is just a look off into fantasy land and what some of the ensemble members show so now let's take a look at some more examples of that this would be the tri-cities for washington <clears throat> this was a forecast i picked up for yesterday morning and look at one of these ensemble runs here. You can see well up into the 115 degree range. That's ensemble member 23, actually 116 there. And then you can go to this weather.us site here and you can punch in that 20 number 23 ensemble and you can zoom in on Eastern Washington and actually see the model run and the map here for that individual ensemble member. So there's really just huge amounts of data you can look at in these ensemble runs. And of course you can do that for all these different parameters and and all kinds of different locations on the planet. This is something interesting here too. This would be total, um, this is total precipitation here, Spokane National Weather Service. And you can see that one of these ensembles showed about nine, eight, nine tenths of an inch of rain here. And that was ensemble number two. And you can kind of see that in that gray line, but you look down towards the control had zero, the mean just barely off the zero degree line, the zero line there, because it's basically an average of all 50 here. But the control run says zero, but ensemble number two says, hey, hold on a minute, I'm picking up some precip there. So again, you can go look at that by clicking on ensemble member number two there and kind of seeing those precipitation values here just something fun to look at and as you guys know once we get into the fall and winter months here for a lot of the west coast north america including california down there up to bc i like to look at these fantasy windstorm forecasts out there and sometimes it does give you a heads up on what's coming and this is one extreme example that i pulled and this was like last october 2022 i believe it was and you can see just this huge low pre very deep low pressure system into british columbia tight gradient behind it and then you can of course zoom in on those individual ensemble runs there so this is just an individual ensemble run purely fantasy but it's just something entertaining to look at now substantial change has also been made to the extended range forecast they are now run daily instead of twice weekly and the number of ensemble members has increased from 51 to 101 so just huge amounts of data that the european model is throwing out here now on a daily basis still the same resolution so you're not going to get the high resolution model with these extended forecasts but you can look all the way out to 46 days and they run these every single day now so how does the European create a forecast? So some observations reflect conditions at the location of the instrument. This is in situ me measurements here uh, that, for the example, weather stations, aircraft radio sons, ships or buoys. Other ob observations are based on remote sensing, for example, satellites or ground-based radar. And you can see they do th this in a different way. The satellite instruments measure electromagnetic radiation emitted from the Earth's surface in the atmosphere. Signals received can be used to infer conditions at the surface or in the atmosphere. Passive sensors measure radiation that is emitted naturally, while active sensors measure the backscatter of radiation emitted from the instrument. So they really have this down to an exact science. <clears throat> 
And now, what is 4D variability? No matter how sophisticated our Earth system models may be, the quality of the forecast they produce crucially depends on the accuracy of the initial conditions, of course. So using the model state from previous forecasts as an estimate of the initial conditions is not good enough. All forecasts come with errors which grow over time. A vital correct a corrective is provided by weather observations. Millions of them are made every day. They come from many sources, including satellites, aircraft, ground stations, ships, drifters, and balloons. So effectively, they're running a dynamic model forward and backward in time, checking for errors and correcting as you go on to the futures and comparing to new and updated weather observations. It's very just cutting edge. I mean, the European is right on the cutting edge of science here with weather forecasting. It's quite it's just awesome to watch i'm glad that we get to watch these new model ones and i'm and i'm very excited about this new information they're just putting out now and the upgrades they've got in their models so the other things uh, too you know they've they worked on um multi-layer snow scheme out there so a lot of times the models will underdo the amount of radiative cooling off of things like snow on the ground and temperatures above that surface there so they're going to improve forecasts with that and there's a uh, prediction of freezing rain and they can also predict high impact freezing drizzle events as well and the european is also works really well with satellite observations so uh, the variational method enables the direct use of satellite measurements, which greatly increases the value of the data. They're leading the research efforts to extract meteorologically useful information from satellite data. For example, it is challenging to use satellite measurements near the Earth's surface and in cloudy rainy conditions. What's more, what's more 40-ver is or variability is particularly well suited to satellite data because of the way the data is spread out across time as well as space. So hopefully that makes some sense and you guys kind of get an idea of where we're coming from here when we're looking into these weather models here and just how hard the European is working. I also suggest checking out their website if you want to get even more information there. Just go ahead and Google ECMWF and that website shows you all kinds of stuff there. Now this is the first European extended run here. You can see it ran out this model run, 101 ensemble runs, including the control. And it shows you for SeaTac here, this is the uh, temperature going all the way out to June 12th here. And you can see there is even a 100 degree day there. I think that is what July 8th here, or August 8th that would be. Of course, obviously, take that with a grain of salt. It's just very interesting to watch these forecasts go out. And another thing it allows it to do is then the European can check, you know, the just how accurate they are. They can look back at these forecasts here, you know, and they put that into their data and they can see just how accurate these forecasts are the further out the, they, the, that you look, basically. So now... Let's take a look at this. This is Seattle Tacoma. This is the first one again. There's the 100 ensemble members plus the control here. And you can see all the way through August 12th here. Look at Seattle. The control run says we're going to get about, what, 0.32 inches of rain all the way through August. I wouldn't completely doubt that. We can go a month without getting precipitation once in a great while here in the Pacific Northwest. And you can see these individual ensemble runs disagree with that. Some of these showing, you know, one to two inches here. Some of them showing very little. But the average is right about four-tenths of an inch. But it's pretty interesting to look at this. And, you know, it would be very interesting to go back and look at this data over a year period to see just how accurate some of these forecasts would be when it's something the European can do and they will be learning from it. And of course, if you want to look at the fantasy snowfall out here, not one of these ensemble, 100 ensemble members picked up any snowfall for Seattle through August. <laughs> kind of interesting here, just kind of a laugh. But, you know, I think the resolution also is a little bit too low to go for windstorm stuff here. The 36 kilometer, I don't know, maybe it could pick up on some kind of wind. Maybe there is and they just don't include it here in Weather Bell. But it's just another example of one of the things you can do. And there's also min temperature there as well. But yeah, pretty interesting stuff here. I hope that clears it up a little bit. If not, go ahead and, you know, leave some comments down below. And I will come back to this video and I'll try to answer questions and whatnot. And I can work on future videos based on what you guys would like to know or what doesn't make sense. Or if I use anything in my daily products as well that don't make sense and you want more clarification on, just go ahead and let me know about that as well. So hopefully you guys like this video. Leave those comments down below and I'll see you guys in my briefings uh, tomorrow morning.